Take two. Okay, let's start with the first one here with these SAT questions. Hey, Seuss, uh-uh, uh-uh. So when we do this one, you'll notice that this is complex number division. All right, and think back to Wednesday. How did I teach you to divide complex numbers? You were here Wednesday, yes. You weren't here Monday. Yes, how do I? Opposite. Can Magdal help? The conjugate, great. So we're going to rewrite and we're going to multiply, and not just the denominator, Adarelli, not just the denominator, but the numerator and the denominator, but you're right, you want to focus in the denominator. What's the conjugate of 8 plus 2i? 8 minus 2i. And then it becomes two multiplications. All right, I personally like to do the denominators first, but it's up to you what order you want to do. It doesn't matter. All right, so what's 8 times 8? 64. Then 8 times negative 2i. Okay, 2i and 8. And that you should see again that that's going to make 0. All right, and then minus 4i squared. All right, and what is i squared? Right, and you see this note that the SAT gave you? That's super helpful if you know anything about how to square something, but I really would have liked for them to give you i squared is negative 1, not the square root of negative 1 for i. But that's okay. So you need to know i squared is negative 1. So that'll be 64 plus 4. Let me see what I did. If i squared is a negative 1, it makes this positive. Yes, Jasper. Are you talking about up here? Yeah. Right now I'm just doing the denominator times denominator. That's all I'm doing right now. So my new denominator is 68. Now you'll notice in my answer choices right now, do you see any denominators of 68? So it doesn't mean that I'm wrong. It just means there's going to be some simplifying at the end. So let's do the numerators. 3 minus 5i times 8 minus 2i. That's going to be 24 minus 6i minus 40i plus 10i squared. So it's going to be 24 minus 46i minus 10. So that'll give me 14 minus 46i. So right now, I don't see the answer. But think back to Wednesday. What can I divide 14, 46, and 68 by? Two. Two. Okay, so 7 minus 23i over 34. So that's the answer you'd put if it was a test for me. So you're trying to find that answer in the SAT question, but you don't see it. How does the SAT write the answer? They split it up. So the numerator of 7 and minus 23i, they each get that fraction, which is fine. It's the same thing. So that's why the answer is C. It doesn't matter. It's just there. that's the way they wrote it. I prefer to write it as one denominator. But it's the same thing. It means the same thing. Right? Because remember when you learn how to add and subtract fractions in middle school? Right? Whenever you have the same denominator, you can just write it over one denominator. So does it 7 minus 23i, that mean that it's Mm -hmm. The minus sign, yes. Yeah. So this one could have been right, Jasmine, D, if it had said plus and had the negative up there, right, with the 23. That would also be right. But it didn't have that. And I'm not sure what happened with these. I'm sure there's a way you can get that. Any questions on this question? All right, let's keep going. All right. This one is a really good one. If you got this one, I'd be super impressed. Okay? You ready for this? Oh, man, I'm excited. Okay. So we have a quadratic. What form is this in? Uh, no. No. It's factored. Yeah. All right. And the other word for that is root form. Root form. Because you can get the roots easily from the factors. 
right? The roots would be 2 and negative 4. Those are the x-intercepts, the roots. Okay? All right, so it says, here is this quadratic, and it says A is some non-zero constant. So A could be 2, A could be negative 3, just non-zero number. All right? It says the vertex of this is C comma D. Which one is equal to D? Whoa. All right? Now watch this. I see that word vertex. Now the only way I know to find a vertex from this class is to either have vertex form or standard form. This is not either of those. But we have two binomials. What happens if I multiply x minus 2 times x plus 4? What will that look like? I, I what if I multiplied out? It would become standard form, right? ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's going to be x squared plus 2x minus 8. I went ahead and skipped a step. You don't, I mean, if you're not there, that's fine. All I did was negative 2x and positive 4x adds to positive 2x. Okay? Is that the equation, though? No. Remember, what's in front of this? The a. So I need to multiply that a. ax squared plus 2ax minus 8. A. Okay, how are we doing so far? Pretty okay? Jasmine, you good? Yeah. Okay. Now, I have just made this standard form, which means to find the vertex, I need the formula for the axis of symmetry, the opposite of B over 2A. Here's where it gets really tough. What is B in this problem? 2A. It's 2A. Very good. So it's everything in front of X. So in the numerator, I'm going to put negative 2A. Okay. Now, what is A in this problem? One. It's A, actually. What's in front of x squared? It's A, so over 2A. So what is my axis of symmetry? Negative, Negative 1, because the A's cross out. Now, what did I just find? Which is letter C? But it wants letter D. How do I get letter D? Plug you plug it in to this guy. So we have y equals a times negative 1 squared plus 2a times negative 1 minus 8a. What's well, negative 1 squared? Positive 1. So that's just going to be a. All of this is going to become minus 2a, and you bring down the minus 8a. So what is that? It's negative 9a, and we have done it. Wow! SAT, what up? Wow, that was just some serious work there. Yeah, my idea. 36 SAT questions on the midterm, and man, I hope they're that good. Because wow, that was incredible. Woo! Man, I'm fired up. Let's stay. Okay. Did you see, that was a hard one, right? You guys all agree? That was really challenging. Okay? Good luck. Let's keep going. Maybe this one will be easier. Okay. We have two functions, and it gave us their parabolas here. So here's the one that has the positive 8. Here's the one that has the negative 8. And it says they both intersect at the x-axis. And it says these points are k, comma, 0, or negative k, comma, 0. So we're trying to find k. Actually, I think this question is giving you more information than you need. What do you know about the x-intercepts? They are, they are yeah, that's the x-axis. There's something important. If I write a function, like this function, how do you find the x-intercepts of this? Well, you're getting ahead of yourself. What? How do I find the x-intercepts? You set it equal to zero. That's the first thing. All right. So I chose this one. Could you have chosen the one that says negative eight? Absolutely. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now you said factoring. Sure, you got it. 
What can I factor out of these two? Two, two not four, right? So it's going to be 4x squared minus 1. Oh, is anyone going to see it? Anyone going to see it? Oh, yes. Anyone going to see it? Really? It's a special case. This is from last unit. Oh, not dots. Oh, Magdiel for the win! Spotlight! Magdiel, dots is right. This right here is the difference of two squares. And do I care about that two in front? I don't. The difference of two squares is going to be 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 1. I'll show you. What's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of x squared? x. Boom, there's your 2x. What's the square root of 1? 1. There you go, you factored it. All right, so now you're going to set each of them equal to zero. I guess I should write it equal to zero over here to stay consistent, Douglas. Okay, now when I move over this negative one, it becomes a positive one. So that's going to be positive one half. And what about this one over here? Negative one half. So what is my value for k? If those are the x-intercepts, it is b. One half. That was another good one. Man, that was good. Whew. Man, I would crush this test. Man, I better. I'm a grown man. You should crush it too. Remember the deal, right? Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Oh, sorry, Adrian. Okay. All right. Okay. Made this one be a little easier. A little easier. Now, the first thing I noticed when I read this was it said f of x equals k minus x squared, and we would never have written it like that. Because when I write it like this, right, if I switch it, what form is that? Uh, Standard form. Right? It just doesn't have a B term, right? Because K is the constant, K is C. You want you guys see why the SAT chose this letter? The K? Because to confuse you. They want you to think about the vertex form with K in it. Well, this is not vertex form. Standard form. Right? They're always trying to confuse you. Okay? Now it says this point is a part of this function. Now, the moment they tell you that, even if it's a quadratic, linear function, any type of function, that means the y value goes where f of x is, and the x value goes into x, and you can solve for k. Because remember, 2, 5 is on this function. Okay? It's on this parabola. All right? So let's do the math here. What's well, 2 squared? 4. So that's going to be the opposite of 4 plus k equals 5. How do you move the negative 4 over? You add 4, so you get 5 plus 4, which is 9. That one seemed a little easier. And because, one, it really was asking you, do you know what it means to say that this function contains this point? It means to plug it in for the f of x and the x. If you don't know that, it's just sorry. Okay, any questions on that one? All right, let's keep going. Two more, I think. Okay. Oh, this one. Oh, here we go. What is the sum of these complex numbers? Boom, I love it. What's 2 plus 4? Boom, I did it. I didn't have to do the other one. But we can do it. 3i plus 8i is 11i. Man, let that be on my SAT. Right? Whew. You have like complex number addition, complex number division. You know which one you want. That one. Zero work needed. All right. Ooh, okay, here's. Whew. Okay, this one I don't expect you to get because I never taught it to you. Okay, so I'm teaching you now. So focus up. If you've been not really focused, time to come back. All right? 
Jasmine, come back to us. Time to focus. It's like sit up. All right, here we go. What form is this in? Standard. What form are all these in? So you probably have never seen this, but you can actually do something to make this look like that. Are you ready? I know it's going to blow your mind. OK, ready? OK, first thing I want you to do is I want you to move that 4 a little bit further right and leave a space in there. Because right, i got to get parentheses somehow, right? Parentheses are in vertex form. Now let's see if anybody's brain is ready for this. I just left a space, and it's quadratic. What am I going to do there? It is complete the square, Jasmine. That's what's up. You're right. I did. So we need b over 2 squared. Remember that? b over 2 squared? So what is b? 6. So that's going to be 6 over 2 squared. Okay. What's 6 divided by 2? 3. And 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to add 9. Now here is where it gets really funky. All right, so listen to the words that I'm saying as you're writing this down. When we first did completing the square, we had to add 9 to both sides. You guys remember that? There's no equal sign up here, right? There are no sides. It's just this expression, all right? So I just added 9 right here. I cannot add 9 and all of a sudden I have the same example or same expression. So if you add 9 here, watch what I'm going to do right outside. Nope, I'm going to subtract it. Because if I don't subtract it, then I've changed the expression. Remember, there's no sides here. It's just one thing. So if you add 9, you've changed the expression. So I've got to also subtract 9. Now I haven't changed it. All right? Now, do you remember how to factor this guy in the parentheses? Yeah. Go to the last uh, thing you did here, 9, and go back a step. So that's going to be x plus 3 squared. Please ask if you don't know why. So remember, this 9, go back a step. Whatever's in there is going to be your binomial squared. Right? This is that. It's on purpose. Okay, and what's 4 minus 9? Oh my gosh, guys, what is that? That is vertex form. Boom. Man, that felt good. We're almost done. We finished the SAT questions, but I want to do some on the back. Actually, we have one more SAT question, and I want to do the rest of the back. We got time, we got 10 minutes. Okay. Any questions? Nope, just stretching. All right. This one, I had to put on two slides. It was so massive. So let's look at the first slide here. It says the range. Oh my gosh, I have not seen that word in forever. What does the range mean? It just means the y values, right? The possible y values. It says the range is the set of real numbers less than or equal to 4. So, oh man, let me throw some interval notation at you. So negative infinity to 4. That's the range. Man, good times. You missed that? Oh, good times. Don't worry. It'll come back again next year. OK? So I'm looking for a parabola or any function here that has a range where my highest y value is what? My highest y value is 4, right? So look at A. Is the highest y value 4? Yeah. Look at B. Is the highest y value 4? Yeah. Look at C. Is the highest y value 4? No. Look at D. It actually is called a cubic function, which we'll get to in January. And the range for this is actually all real numbers. So, no. Nah. So this really comes down to A and B. And there's one more piece of information they're giving us. The zeros are negative 3 and 1. So I'm looking for my function to go through the x-axis at negative 3 and 1. If you look at answer A, negative 3 and 1. It is A. Well, usually, I hope it's pretty easy once I explain it.
Okay. Now I want to take the last seven minutes to go over this question about the green monster at Fenway Park. And if you don't watch baseball, then you don't know what that is. Okay. So we have this scenario where a player, let's say the Astros, George Springer hits a home run over the left field wall, the green monster at Fenway Park. A Red Sox fan catches it, and man, does he hate George Springer, right? So he takes that ball, and he chucks it all the way back on the field. Don't worry. George is fine. It didn't hit him, all right? Now, this function is modeling that trajectory, right? Because when you throw that ball, you think parabola, right? That's what I do when I throw baseballs. So the first thing I want to do is I want to graph it. Now, how have we graphed these quadratics when they're in standard function? Well, does it open up or down? It opens down. What's the axis of symmetry? The opposite of B over 2A. What is B? 32. So the opposite of 32 is negative 32. What is A? Negative 16. So if we divide negative 32 over negative 32, we get 1. If I plug in 1 to that function, I'm going to get negative 16 plus 32 plus 48. which is 64. Very good. And finally, what's the y-intercept? It's 0, 48. I'm going to pause here, make sure everybody's OK. I know I'm going quickly, but I hope you realize that you've already done this. It wasn't a word problem, but you've done this before. OK? So let's plot it. What's the vertex? 1, 64. So probably like right there. Okay? The axis of symmetry is going through that. What's my y-intercept? 0, 48. So somewhere over there. So if I use my axis of symmetry, the other one is going to be probably there. Right? Two units away. I guess in this case, one unit away. Okay. How do I get the rest of my points? The calculator. the calculator. Let's do it. Get your calculator out. Hit table. Hit table and type in, what was it, negative 16, we'll make it x, x squared. It's negative 16, right? Yeah. Plus 32x plus 48. Type this into the calculator. Probably, yeah. I mean, because ultimately, do you see how there uh, we don't have a point at three, right? It's going to be somewhere at three. I want to know three seconds after that guy releases the ball, where's the ball? Somebody said it. Is it zero? It's on the field. Look at that. Okay. Can everyone visualize the guy throwing it back? So he was 48 feet. So. so he released the ball 48 feet above the ground. How high did the ball get? What's the highest point? 64 feet. Is this feet? What is this? Yep, 64 feet. All right. And how long did it take for the ball to hit the ground? Three seconds. All right, now let's just answer that in these questions, right? At what height was the fan when he threw the ball? 48 feet. What was the maximum height of the ball? 64 feet. And when did the ball hit the ground? Three seconds. Wow, Jasmine, that'd be a long throw. All right, we did it, guys. We did it. I'm proud of you. Proud of you.